may the savings be ever in your favor. The Black Friday Games is a parody of the Hunger Games with the added plot device of, of it also making fun of Black Friday because the rampant consumerism that we see every year, year after year, it gets worse and you hear about fatalities when people are like waiting to get into Walmart to get their their 50 inch uh, television or something like that. We wanted to make fun of that and we, we've imagined that it would be like this Hunger Games situation where everybody's kind of rushing and trying to get the hot deals on Black Friday. And we're going. And we're going. Lots of tension. Lots and lots of tension. Any minute. Poppy Eveline! I volunteer as tribute! I volunteer as tribute! Me too! Happy Black Friday games! May the savings be ever in your favor! No, I, I just want to not cross him. I want to see it in I want to see it right here. Okay, a little bit over. They want to hold walk? Three, two. The night after Thanksgiving, it was Black Friday, and we were all sitting there around a table, and somebody, found, we heard on the news that somebody brought a taser to the, a mall and was tasering people. Within seconds of fist flying, the video shows a girl in gray using what appears to be a stun gun on another shopper. My brother-in-law was like, it's, it's like the Hunger Games out there, and I was like, that's a good idea. Chad Horn, the producer of the Black Friday games, he and I worked together in corporate video over the years and he knew that I was a filmmaker so he had the idea then brought me on board to write the screenplay and then later I uh, became the director as well. I thought that was a great idea and I did think that that it fit in well with this idea of a of a dystopian futuristic world where the like a corporation had just taken over everything. Our, our first team meeting was back in January. We just got together and kind of said, hey, who wants to do this film? Who's gonna fill what role? And we're just bouncing ideas back and forth. You're at the Capitol, and even though it's only for a short while, it doesn't mean you don't, you can't enjoy yourself. I mean, look around, we have platinum door handles and golden chandeliers. Casting was awesome. Working in DC, I knew that there was a lot of talent here. All right, everyone, good morning. I want to let you all know that I'm looking forward to a really good Hunger Games. Everything is about Katniss nowadays. Katniss, 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 Katniss. You better lock it up, old duck. I'm going, and that's it. We were very fortunate to find people that were funny, uh, could act, and also bore some resemblance to the characters in the original film, so that that way people would know who we were lampooning with a particular uh, character. That's right. When those stylish jackets became popular, the corporation started mass producing them in China. Now they have been treated with a chemical that makes them absolutely waterproof, but that chemical also burns human flesh on contact. I'm Chelsea Lloyd and I'm playing Cashless Everlene. I think this Cashless is definitely more um, bitchy, I guess, if I could say that. More mean, perhaps, um, for, to pretty much everybody. I think Katniss like, has a hardness about her in the actual film, but kind of like our version is like cutthroat, like she'll do anything to get to the end. Like, and, you know, there is no love between her and our PETA, you know, at all. Like she finds him completely revolting. Oh, oh pizza, pizza, no! Oh my god! You know you love Oh it. my eyes! It's like she's only watching out for herself, which I think is a little bit different because you know in the movie she wants Peta to live and they do end up living together. Not the same in our movie. <laughs> my name is Chris Stinson and I play Pizza. It's a nice little switch up from uh, the normal Peta um, because this character is uh, a bit different. He's um, still in love with uh, the cashless Katniss character. Uh, but um, the ways he shows affection are a little bit different in this version. There's no subtlety to his affection. Um, he is with her at every moment, whether she wants him there or not. Stop it. Come on, I love it. 
this morning I was uh, mostly naked, covered in baby oil, so that was a memorable one. Sexiest shot of the shoot. What's that? I'm paying him to say Sexiest that. Part of the weekend. Sexiest part of the weekend. Uh, I've totally embraced the ridiculousness of this story that we're telling, and I think it will really be a crowd pleaser. For what is essentially a volunteer project, we had a really big and and good crew, people who knew what they were doing. Joe is is the DP, uh, who pre-visualized everything and then came in to set with uh, his leg in a cast because he had just had surgery the day before. I had uh, knee surgery the uh, day prior to uh, principal photography. I was on crutches. My AC, who was originally going to be my AC, Wes, turned into my camera op for almost everything. And uh, I ended up relying a lot more on other people uh, than I'm used to doing. It was fantastic working with Wes. He's a great guy. He knows the gear very well. We did a lot of pre-planning and production with the storyboards and stuff. So I think it was really easy to communicate, even on short notice, what I wanted. Um, even when maybe I wasn't able to, <laughs> the painkillers were fantastic. In the original Hunger Games film, there's a scene where uh, all the enemy combatants kind of chase, they've ganged up and they're chasing Katniss up a tree. We definitely wanted to recreate that. It was one of the uh, funnier parts in the script where Katniss runs and climbs a retail shelf and gets away from them. This series of shots is almost identical to how we boarded it. Uh, when we did the storyboarding, we had the exact size and height of all the shelves and the roof and the room, so we knew what we were getting into before we got there. And in a way, the software let us know how we could put lights in, keep all the stands out of the shot, what we could do, and also how much space we had to cover with props. Uh, we're putting this in balloons so that we can create like a splatter effect. Kristen has been uh, my art director for, for, for a few commercials we've done, and I knew that Trying to take on a, pro a project that's this ambitious, we would need someone very talented who can handle it and has a really strong vision. She's made this her own because we are sitting in a medical supply warehouse and we were able to turn it into something resembling a big box store seamlessly and successfully, which is a great testament to her. The costumes are all similar the source material, but we've definitely got our own spin on everything. I think everything looks great. In terms of the set, everything was really easy. We just, you know, we had lots of boxes we had to collect. Um, uh, you know, everybody brought clothes, you know, to fill in. Martha, she's been a huge help. She's been helping out with the makeup, um, helping out with a little bit with the wardrobe styling, making a couple of decisions for me. Her mother has actually been helping out. My boyfriend Barry has been a godsend this weekend. The oddly the biggest um, the the biggest challenge was really the wardrobe, especially Effie, because she needed to be spot on. I'm really happy with how Effie looks. I'm really really happy. I I was the most nervous about her the whole time. Just you know you know like like I said, nailing the hair and the wig was hard to find. And, you know, nailing the makeup, nailing the the gaudy pink outfit. You know. And Martha did her makeup for both both days. It was perfect. She did she did amazing. Here's uh this is this is the one we're using. <laughs> we didn't get. In, oh, you have to have that first cut of the movie, which is nine minutes and thirty three seconds long. So now we're determining what we want to do to improve it. So we're gonna tighten up some things. To make some of the jokes work a bit better, uh, and uh, we've got we've got this long list of notes from our producers about uh, about what we need to do. So we have a we have a handy guide. My name is Ben Finkel, and I'm the editor on this project, and I was also one of the camera operators. This project's definitely more elaborate and complex uh, than what I normally do. Normally, if I'm keying a green screen, it's there's one person talking to a camera, and I'm putting a background in behind him. Here what we're doing is we're combining lots of different layers of things shot on green screen. The most complicated scene in the whole movie is only on there for about one second, and it's when they're selecting the people to be chosen for the Black Friday games. And that was a background that I created in Photoshop from multiple photos 
and then we had probably 10, maybe 15 different camera shots, all shot on green screen, keyed out, and then composited together, all to make this one shot that is on the screen for about a second. Poppy Everleen. Uh, I'm Bruce Farkerson, and I'm a composer. What a lovely movie. Music is so good and so important in storytelling. It helps to achieve what, what other things can't. It, it adds that, that, little, that little oomph, uh, both consciously and subconsciously, because sometimes you're aware that the music is bringing something and making you aware of something, and sometimes you're not. And talking with Chad and um, corresponding with Francis, they told me what the movie was about and uh, what, they, what they were spoofing. And um, we talked about staying true as closely to the music from the original and in its serious approach. Uh, and the music is serious, but they're acting ridiculous. So it's almost like, you know, you take yourself too seriously. And it, uh, that in itself is, is funny. So the music helps to establish um, the seriousness while they're acting in such a crazy way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Thompson, and I'm helping with directing of uh, our fun parody here. I gotta see you finish that thought over here with the... Uh, I got this shit. This is okay. It was really fun because I got to direct some of the fight scenes, the action stuff. Got to kill some people, not literally. Um, and the actors were great. They were really game to just try and do and, and really did some great stuff very quickly. Uh, but great fight choreographer Dominique who was there coordinating with us. So I'm not sure if it was more fun doing it or actually getting to stage it because it was I wanted to be one of the actors. We had a good time. It's been a really organized uh, group of people, especially huge team, a lot of moving parts, covering a whole lot of ground simultaneously in two units, and it's all gone extremely well. So great shoot. You okay? Uh, yeah. My name is Dominique Morrow. I am stunts and fight choreographer for the Black Friday games. Nothing too big on the shoot today or yesterday. Uh, just some really simple falls, uh, some really simple fight choreography. So um, I'm just kind of here to, to help them fall safely. And I've been providing mats and pads and all those things to keep everybody safe. My favorite stunt that we got to do for this was actually not that we filmed here, but a few weeks ago we got to set um, Chelsea on fire. I work with a team in uh, Maryland called Misfits of Mayhem, so I got to bring some of them on uh, to help me with coordinating and the safety aspects of, of that day. It was cool. It was really a surreal experience to be lit on fire. <laughs> they put baby powder on the actual skin to kind of prevent sweat and like steam burning, and then a layer of cotton um, protection. So whether it was like leggings or like a kind of um, long johns, and then they put like a big thick like gel cream substance that was fire resistant all over my body, and then my costume on top of that. And then the cape was vel velcroed to my arm, so if they needed to, they could have pulled that off as well. I think I was more nervous the day that I went for training because what they did at the training was more intense than what we actually did for the set. They actually lit my, from my lower back up to my shoulders, like on fire for real, like I just a hoodie. And so that was really kind of terrifying because it's, you know, the fire was coming up around my face and I had to like walk around and move with it. But, you know, the stunt people felt like if they did something a little bit more intense in the training that I would be a-okay with just my cape, you know, being lit on fire. And they were right. I was much calmer um, the day of shooting just because I knew it wasn't directly on me and, you know, and I was really safe. But it was cool. <laughs> She was complaining she didn't have a death scene, so we're, we're fixing that. We don't, we don't want anybody to go home not dead. They want to put boxes in the shopping cart? Thank you. You ready? Let's roll. Take a big breath and hold it. Thank you. 
So, what do you think about the costumes and the props and everything? Oh, it's terrible. Good. None of it. Nothing's ready. <laughs> no, it's great. It, with the budget we have and the uh, amount of people that are uh, creating different things and different looks, it, it looks great. It looks fantastic. It's, it's how they pulled it off, I don't know. You know, I wish the schedule was a little more practical. Um, but it never is. Shut up, Sam. Um... <laughs> 